Hi, it's Paris from Epic Reviews, the tech channel, and being an Android purist pays off on days like today. I've got my Google Galaxy Nexus. It just gave me a notification that there is an up system update available for Android 4.3. I'm going to install this, see what new features there are, but I'm especially interested in finding out if I now have trim on this device. This has really slowed down, but I've filled up nearly everything. I know I need to clean it all out and wipe it all out, and then it would be fast again. But I've heard that with Android 4.3, they've included trim, which if you're not familiar with that, it basically does uh, maintenance and housekeeping and cleanup on your solid state drive in your device when it's not being used for something else, makes it run much faster, makes it run almost like new. So I really want to see if that is included and if it will run on the Google Galaxy Nexus. Okay, let's go through the process of installing. Got our little Android guy there, installing system update. It's now installed, it's to optimizing apps, it's got to go through 90 of them. All right, there we are, Galaxy Nexus running at 4.3. After finishing the update and updating the apps, I noticed this little hole right here. I thought, what did I used to have there? Navigation has disappeared, and I noticed that um, it took quite a while for the update to complete the last step, and it turned out it was up uh, downloading a new version of Google Maps. And Google Maps and navigation kind of got weird in the last week or so, so I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen with that now. I looked through all the apps and navigation is gone. Um, I assume it's replaced with Maps. I don't know if they've included all the functionality or if I'm going to have to go to the Google Play Store and get another navigation app. But basically Maps is acting like it's never seen me before. It wants me to agree to the terms of service. This is now what I get when I go into Maps to search. And I realized the, the weirdness I noticed with Google Navigation and possibly when it actually disappeared was when I installed Google Now. It seemed to take over things in terms of deciding how to get me where I wanted to go and fill me with lots of information. So it may be that Navigation disappeared when I installed Google Now, not when I installed this update, but it's definitely gone and now Maps has uh, got a whole new interface. Seems like they're really pushing their reviews and visits. This my home apparently is a spot you can give a rating to if you happen to come by. My yard's not mowed, so I don't expect I'm going to get very good reviews. But all places that I've uh, had something to do with recently, easy to get back to if I need to. Seem to be some new things with camera settings. Um, well, this isn't so exciting. It's just like a different format of how you get into the options. So it's not such a big deal here. You can choose scene modes based on the lighting. A couple bigger changes that I noticed are in video mode. There's now a time lapse option. I don't remember that being there from before. Time lapse. Turn it on and you can choose. Now you would think it would make a slow motion video, but going through it, what I found is it's, um, it basically takes pictures at a set interval. You can go that way, have a longer interval, but the shortest interval you can do is half a second or you can do minutes and hours. I don't quite know how you'd use that, but if you want your camera to take pictures of, you want the camera in your phone to take pictures every so often, you can set that and go back here. And when you say record, what it'll do now is basically take the pictures Another what I think is a new feature in the Android 4.3 is I remember the panorama used to be fairly crummy compared to the, um, the iPhone because the iPhone would do it all in one swoop whereas with this it would basically take the series of pictures and you had to use some software to stitch them together. But now it's pretty simple. We go back and take a look. It's a finished panorama. You don't have to use any stitching software.
And maybe the biggest change of all, under normal camera, once you've taken a picture, this is where I saw some new things. Let's uh, do this one. There are now edit options with a little pencil icon down, whoop, down here in the left. And it's a lot of stuff similar to what you might find in Instagram. There are options for um, putting a frame around it. I know Instagram has that too. Cropping, straightening, rotating, mirroring. This one lets you change the contrast in the picture. So that's all new. I don't remember that being in the previous version. Google Play Store supposedly has some updates. I don't see that it looks a lot different poking around in there a little. I do know that Google Play was recently um, upgraded on its own, but supposedly now you can uh, save your games and the levels you're on to the cloud, and there are more features to let you play other people on the internet. Now just in the 45 minutes or so I've been playing with it, I swear it's faster. It could just be my imagination. Uh, there is no easy way apparently to tell if that trim feature is running on it. And supposedly the phone has to be idle for it to go and do all of that cleanup to increase your speed later on. But it sure, sure seems faster to me. Now it didn't seem faster when it first finished the update. It's over time sped up, crazy as that sounds, which makes me think it really is that trim feature cleaning up the clutter of the hard drive and freeing up some dedicated space where it can do its work. Sort of like running defrag on a mechanical hard drive, but there are some other updates that could account for the increase in speed. There's a new um, OpenGL standard that's now supported. They said it should improve the graphics function of all the Nexus devices. Doesn't matter which chip you have, they should all run faster. I did try out a few games, the um, Hill Climbing Racer and Fruit Ninja. They seem to be faster than they were. There also seems to be some more awareness that the phone is now allowed to have. One is, um, even with Wi-Fi turned off, it's able to use the Wi-Fi, apps are, to find out where you are. And Bluetooth Low Energy, which allows the phone to communicate with a lot of fitness devices that are in vogue, things that you wear on your wrist to monitor your pulse, or things in your shoe to measure how many steps you've taken, things like that can now communicate with the phone. So it's kind of more aware of its surroundings. And if you've been following the news about the Motorola Google Moto X that'll be coming out in two days, that's supposedly key to that phone, that the phone's gonna end up having a better idea of what's going on than some of the people holding the phone. So I'm thinking that the Moto X, which I'm very interested in, it will be sort of the brains phone, whereas the S4 and maybe even the Nexus 5, they're more of the brawn phone. They're going to have the very fast, like the, some of the rumored specs on the Nexus 5, a 2.3 gigahertz quad core processor, whereas the Moto X will have a much more modest dual core 1.7 gigahertz processor. And so it comes down to, as it always does, brains versus brawn. Now that's going to be reflected in the price too, I imagine. Those very fast cutting edge phones like the S4, that was $649. Possibly the Nexus 5 will be similarly priced, whereas the Moto X, which is just a modest hardware upgrade even from this phone, is going to be similarly modestly priced. I think I got this for $349. I would expect the Moto X to come in at about the same price. And when it comes down to brains versus brawn, I think I'll go with brains.